Hi there Year 11, this is a short video cast to help you prepare for your mock exams in November. The mock exam in November for me is really about section A. And section A is the compulsory section of the written exam and it comprises of four questions each worth 10 marks. Now the section A is all about the practical work that you've done throughout the course and it is about therefore about each project. So it is about it snows, it is about the devised performance, it is about persecution, or it could be about the Ash Girl or the, play, the final production unit that we do at the end of the year. Either way, you need to choose one of those projects. You can't answer question one about it snows, question two about persecution. You must stick with the same project for all four questions. Okay, so... Make sure the first thing you do is that you state in your answers the role you've got, okay? And it's actually, the role is the wrong word, it's the skill that you've got. And for most of you, the skill is acting. For some of you, it's lighting, and might be some others, but majority of you, it is about acting. That's your skill. You have 45 minutes to do this section in. Remember, it's an hour and a half exam. The other section is section C. So therefore, for this one, you've got half the time, 45 minutes. And that's about 10 minutes per question, possibly 11 minutes per question. But then that doesn't give you much time to check your answers. So in reality, 10 marks, 10 minutes, that's a mark a minute. So, a couple of key reminders. Make sure that you read the question properly. Some of you, in your very first homework, and remember the homeworks were based on the section A questions, didn't read the question and didn't get the marks, even though you wrote quite a lot. So make sure you read the question properly. Remember to use key words. The first thing you need to do in your revision is to go online, go to uh, BBC Bite Size, go onto the frog, get the vocab list, and get as many of those vocabs into your head as possible. It's got to be literally dripping with key words. I need to be tripping over them. Be specific. The examiner is looking for you to use those key words in a specific way. He wants you, or she wants you, to describe your use of voice in terms of tone, pause, pace, pitch. He doesn't want you to just simply describe, well, I said that voice in a negative way. Describe how that neg was, the word was negative. Uh, the examiner is also not looking for you to be general. He doesn't want to know, you know, when looking at evaluation, I should have rehearsed more. The examiner is looking for you to be really specific. To improve my performance, I should have used a different tone of voice and said this line at a faster pace. That's the kind of specificity, however you say that word, they want. Finally, and this comes directly from the uh, examiner's report. It's got to be written from the perspective of I. The examiner doesn't mind what you did as a group or as a class. What the examiner cares about is what you individually did. I did this. To perform the, my character, I did this. I changed this. I. Always I, I, I. So, let's look at the first question. Question 1 of Section A is a describing question. It's an easy question and it should be a nice way in to the exam. It's simply asking you to, de to describe the piece you created, whether it's a scripted, devised or a mixture of the two. The things you need to cover in that answer is your role, what your piece was about, your character, the style of theatre, whether it was naturalistic, epic, physical theatre. The period and genre, whether it was set today, whether it was set in the past, whether it was a comedy. The space you used and the stage layout. We've performed all of our stuff in this studio where I'm stood right now. And so that happens to be largely end-on, end-on stage. But sometimes... 
We can make that different. We can use promenade theatre, we can use in the round theatre. It can be different. And perhaps the next project, you might want to think about that. And a brief description of how you use technology. And I say brief because you need to talk about how, about how it added to your individual performance as an actor. You are not being examined. Unless you are doing technical areas, you are not being examined on technical things. You're not being examined in, on costume. But as an actor, you can talk about how costume has improved your performance and developed your performance. Okay, so you need some focus on all of those things to cover. Question two. Question two is an explaining question. And again, in your homeworks, this was a question that we struggled on. So, we want to make sure that we are explaining how you have applied a skill to at least one aspect. So remember that one aspect is an example of the same piece of theatre as question one. And again, I'm going to reiterate, the defining of the skill is not developing movement or voice, but it is your skill as an actor. So, for actors, it is asking you to explain how you applied your performance skills to creating your character. How you and employed movement, voice, uh, facial expressions, uh, gestures, um, use of space. How you used those performance skills to develop and improve your character. And you need to tie that in to an example in your performance. So you could say, to during the really tense part of my performance, I really wanted to highlight my character's fear. By in doing so, I crouched down, I bent my head forwards as if I were to make sure the audience understood that I was scared. I made my voice warble, I changed the tone, blah, 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 you get the idea. The key is in being concise and specific. Here is where you get your dictionary of keywords and you regurgitate it really well on the paper. So, here's a, a P example. Point I was explained. So, point is the character you played with a short description, really short. You only got 10 minutes. Evidence in the play, my character had to do X. To do this, I changed my voice, added this tone, moved like that, changed my stance, blah. You also need to mention how you interacted with other members of the cast. Remember, I kept telling you, it's much about reaction as it is about action. So perhaps in your example, you could pick an example where you have reacted to something else that someone has said. And that way, you cover that base really well. Finish off with, how did the things you did have an effect on the audience? Your piece of theatre was trying to communicate something to the audience. You wanted to communicate something to the audience. Did you manage to do that using this? Okay, question three. Question three is the analysis question. It asks you to review and evaluate the improvements that you have made during the rehearsal process. Right? You must refer to one specific occasion where you have developed your skill and why. And remember, that skill is in, for most of you, your action. So you can't say, well, I, in my lesson, I spent a lot of time sorting the music out and making sure that was right. That's not what the examiner is looking for. The examiner isn't looking for if you have spent your time directing another group. What the examiner is looking for is to see how you have improved your use of voice, your movement, your stance of that character. So, you must refer to one specific occasion where you have developed your skill and why. These are the things to look at. Voice, movement, characterisation and or effect on the audience. You've only got ten minutes, so really, you're only going to be able to focus on one of those. Maybe two, maybe even three. You must also state how you made those improvements. So, in particular, I've spent a lot of your rehearsal process going around taking notes. And you've gone there with those notes and improved on that suggestion. That is an important part of the rehearsal process. So mention that as well. 
Be specific. Be really specific. Whereas in question two, we were planting keywords all over the place. Here, you really want to get nitty gritty with some of those keywords and get into much more depth with them. So, four areas, four questions, four sub-questions to answer when looking at question three. An area where you have improved, how, why did you need to improve it? Was it communicating enough? Was it strong enough? How did you improve it? I changed my tone of voice there. I improved my stance to make sure that I was communicating that more to the audience. And what effect did that change have? Well, it communicated to the audience much clearer the character I was trying to be. Moving on to the last question. An evaluation of the contribution to group work. That's a really tricky question. And if you are using the 10 minutes to question time, I suggest for this question you go for 12 or 13, because this is a toughie. You must refer to specific moments in the rehearsal where you have contributed. And you've got to evaluate it, not describe it. Not simply say, I did this, I did this, I did this. But evaluate your contribution. That's really hard. So be specific to your skill again. Don't say I directed the group or I looked after the music that lesson. Be specific about your acting skill. So be specific about your skills, your strengths and weaknesses, your artistic and aesthetic achievements, how you have collaborated with others, how have you ensured the audience receive a positive experience. Evaluate the process of working on your performance piece. Essentially what this question is asking you to do is to go one step beyond question three. So the question three was about the improvement that you made to your individual performance. Question four is about a contribution that you have made to improve the overall performance. And that could reference how you have developed and how you've intervened with another person's performance. But if you do so, make sure you reference your own performance as well. So think about a time where you've improved someone else's performance because they are with you and performing with you. Okay, so the best preparation for this part of the exam is to take notes under the four different headings. Okay, so describing your performance, explain how you applied your skill, analyse your improvement, evaluation of your contribution. Try to have four different pieces of A4 paper with notes under those four headings on it. Have two examples of practical work in mind for each heading. So you can go into the exam knowing that you've got at least two examples. So if you feel like you've got more time, you can write about more examples. Don't forget, the examiner only ever asks for at least one. So therefore, if you give more than one, you aren't necessarily going to get any more points. It's about the quality of the work you're offering. Flesh out these two examples of practical work with as many keywords as you can. Complete the process so you've got a set of notes of what you are going to write for these four questions. And practice those. Practice them. They're only 10 minutes long, so you can do 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day. Write two questions in two days. Four questions in two days. Just practice them. Sit down in front of, after watching television, just knock a question out. Go and make a cup of tea. Practice is the best way to prepare. You can't take the notes in with you, but the more time you spend with those notes, the better prepared you will feel going into the exam to be able to give your strong response. Okay, so, Year 11, good luck with Section A. It's going to be another screencast about Section C coming soon. Good luck.